Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, working group. And uh, we are calling this meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 5.33 p.m. on March 3rd. That was almost hard to get out of my mouth when I said March. I mean, I can't believe it's March already. Okay. Anyways, March 3rd, glad you all are here. And uh, thank you for your work. Uh, I'm gonna take roll now since we do have a quorum. Um, Brianna Owen. Here. Pat Anonibaku. Yeah. Miss Vernon Jones. Here. Alicia Walker. Here. Uh, Tashina Bowman. Here. Thank you all for being here and welcome again. Uh, very quickly, just want to uh, uh, welcome everyone and, and on a regular basis, I will continue to thank you all for your hard work and, um, and commitment to this group. It's, uh, it's pretty intense work and it's broadening and deepening as we go forward. So uh, certainly appreciate all the things that, that you are doing and for any community members who are um, listening or probably will uh, at some point see the video. We thank you for being in attendance and we also encourage you to stay in touch with our work on uh, the Amherst website. Uh, for this evening, we are, uh, we're not going to uh, approve the, the minutes of the February 10th, 2021 meeting as they are not available at this particular moment. So I'm just gonna go over a quick uh, review of our agenda. And uh, this evening we're going to, as we normally do, go through uh, public comment and uh, check in with our membership to see if they have any uh, pre-meeting uh, information they wanna share. Beyond that, our action and discussion items are to discuss the workflow, in particular, uh, Seven Generations Movement Collective. And in that conversation, since they are not here, we will be talking a bit about the direction we wanna take and the focus we wanna take with respect to the uh, uh, coming on of a, a consultant um, who, to, who will be available soon to help us with our work. And uh, we'll have a chance to examine that and discuss those, those matters. Uh, we also have our fiscal year 22 recommendations. And we hope to, to bring our recommendations into some focus in our discussion. We have had lots of information come into our group, um, either by the group members themselves or from outside folks. And we've been educating ourselves to the point where we feel and we did last meeting talk a little bit about where some of our inclinations may be in terms of some preliminary recommendations. But I think in this case, we'd like to bring some more uh, specific focus to this as we have our consultant group coming on soon. So that'll be part of that discussion. And um, then we're gonna talk about the uh, community safety working groups meeting timeframe and deadlines. And that may be a bit of a smorgasbord because we are have a lot of things that have to happen in a timely manner, uh, not the least of which is making recommendations to the town, thinking about recommend, uh, uh, thinking about working with our consultant group, and uh, could go as far as discussing things about any residual matters about gift cards. Uh, policy writing, it, it, it could run the gamut there, but the, the major theme around that is to try to see if we can uh, focus on what we need to do within the type time frame we have to work as a, as a group. After that, we uh, will take a look at upcoming events, set our next meeting date, and welcome any topics that did not reach the, the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting and then we'll adjourn. So again, thank you for being here, uh, everyone, and thank you again for your work. And 
So we're going to go right to public comment. At this point, we would welcome um, any comments, thoughts, or contributions from our, our community. And um, Ms. Moyston will recognize you and bring you um, into the discussion as she sees your hands raised. Okay, yeah. So good evening, everyone. I am going to be typing the notes in today for the minute so that hopefully that'll flow a little faster and we can at least stay current. Um, and then we have Mr. So you might not, I'm here, but I'm typing. So also Mr. Um, Vince O'Connor is here and has a comment to make as well. Hi, Mr. O'Connor. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I just have a brief uh, um, bit of information. Um, I listened on National Public Radio on their New York station to, the, to an interview of the mayor of Ithaca, New York, who, after having um, used the services of the Center for Police Equity, um, pursuant to the governor's mandate that of New York, his mandate that every um, entity that uh, employs a police department uh, has to go through a public process of deciding how that police department shall be constituted and configured and so forth. Um, the mayor put forth a recommendation uh, that the that there be a, a community uh, service and um, uh, public safety department, and that it be headed. There there would remain some armed officers, but it be headed by a civilian and a non-police person. And um, I I basically think that the recommendations, which I don't think have been adopted by the City Council of Ithaca, but just been presented, um, would be useful information for the committee, for the working group, and um, as would perhaps the, there may be other efforts of the Center for Police Equity focused on this, the on various political subdivisions of the state of New York that might also um, give the, the working group a, you know uh, some sense of where and Ithaca of course is a college town as is Eugene Oregon Oregon and so um, there may be some specific recommendations that uh, that pertain to college towns that might be useful for the working group and that's it thank you very much thank you mr o'connor Any other uh, community members we need to acknowledge at this time, uh, Ms. Ms. Moyston? No, it was just Mr. O'Connor. Okay. Give us another 10 seconds and then we'll, we'll move forward. Thank you to uh, community members who are in attendance and thank you for your input. Um, as you know, we, we don't engage in conversation, but I wanna say out you know, very publicly, we appreciate the, the time and energy you put into contributing to our work and your interest in our work. So we're all very grateful for that. Also, for those who are on on the call right now and at the meeting, I would hope that you would also continue to, to spread the word about our, our meetings and encourage people to either attend our meetings or to uh, connect with us on our website where there is lots of information 
and an opportunity to uh, extend your comment, uh, offer your comments and extend your commentary um, in, in just another venue. So thank you all again. Uh, welcome Ms. Walker and Ms. Ferreira. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, didn't see you at the outset, so I just wanted to make sure you knew I saw you. Uh, and also thank you, uh, Mr. Delaney for being here. Um, this evening to help us work through some of the, the matters re regarding our new uh, consultation. And as always, I want to thank uh, Ms. Moyston before we uh, get into the heart of our agenda here. Uh, I know, and our, our working group knows that uh, we are probably the hardest group to keep up with, with respect to minutes, et cetera, because we meet weekly. And it's it's a pretty dense effort. Um, I, I I think um, you know Ms. Moisten from my conversations and our connection with her, her commitment has been appreciated and everything. So as we go forward, we'll try to work through uh, issues of the minutes. But just to be very upfront and candid about this, that this is an unusual situation where we have lots of information having to be turned over on a weekly basis. So we're doing the best we can. So uh, things like minutes and things like that, we will get to them as we get to them, but we uh, have a lot of work to do on, on, on the, the meeting date that we have. So we uh, will continue to focus on that. Um, also, I just wanna mention, and you know, Ms. Moisson, feel free to, to chime in on this if you feel needed, the need to do so. Uh, th these minutes are basically for the public. Um, we are here. We hear what's going on. We take our own notes, I'm sure. And uh, at some uh, moment, we also have access to the videos. But these minutes are for the public. And uh, if people uh, in the public feel that they need information, they can always make a request, uh, Ms. Moiston and the town uh, of Amherst, for minutes of a particular meeting. And those can, can be uh, forwarded to you. So that said, Ms. Moiston, did I, did I cover? Well, Most yeah, I, I just to state that the, I have access to all of the, the videos, so all of our meetings. And so IT uploads them, but I they are behind in all the boards and committees. So if people want access to things like minutes that aren't posted, or if people want additional information, they can ask for just the entire meeting, and I can send that in a link as well. Thank you, and, and we appreciate the, the, the work and support you've given us to this particular group. So let's just dive right in. Our first agenda item uh, has to do with uh, Seven Generation Movement Collective. And uh, we're close to engagement. Is that fair to say, Mr. Delaney? <laughs> yep, the, uh, the contract has been yeah. sent to Seven Generations. They're reviewing now. Uh, once they sign it, it's it's all electronic. It'll get sent to the town attorney, the town com, uh, comptroller, the town manager for their signatures. Uh, the town signatures should be very fast, but seven generations has to review the contract. They, I'm guessing, they'll probably run it by their attorney. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's in their hands and it's moving, and they will be official shortly. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for that update. And um, I think related to this, we had initially anticipated that we might have an opportunity to engage in conversation with our new consultant group. But because of the, the logistics of the signature and the review that's not happening this week, we will schedule that uh, very soon, as, uh, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and uh, that's, that's our next step for, for engagement. And uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. Delaney, um, if you have any comments or any, anyone has any comments for Mr. Delaney, um, we've already seen some communications about the process in, in an email, but before we uh, move forward and maybe allow him to, to move, to move on, uh, like to just check in with the group. Um, Ms. Ms. Pat. I just want to give a quick uh, subcommittee um, report. 
basically last week we followed the same format that we, we had with uh, Boston Mantra. We um, contacted two references who were available. And one of them was actually a former uh, high school principal, Mr. Mark Jackson. And then um, another reference um, was from uh, a UMass professor. And both references were very good, excellent. It was like day and night um, for, it, for what they gave us. I just wanted to share that. And I want to thank Mr. Delaney. I really enjoy working with you. It's been very fun. And uh, Ms. Marston, and of course, uh, um, Tashina, my daughter, um, it's been fun. Thank you all for your collaboration. I just want to share that. That is certainly a worthwhile sharing and, and, and thank you. And, and I'd be remiss in not thanking you, Ms. Pat, and others for following through twice on dealing with references and going through this process and getting us to the point where we are at this particular time. So thank you all again. Um, Ms., uh, Ms. Ferreira, I think you had your hand up. Yep. Um, yeah, I'd like to also, you know, say my thanks to the subcommittee. I know it's been, you know, a lot of work. So I thank you so much and Mr. Delaney too for taking the time and to get us to this point because I know it hasn't been easy. Um, I guess I just want a little bit more kind of um, um, fine tuning. I, I saw Ms. Boynston's email in terms of contacting seventh generation mm -hmm. and, and seeing, you know, about scheduling meetings, but I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna try to get them on for next week. Is that gonna be the goal so that we can have our meeting and maybe the vote next week, the kind of meeting with them and going through what needs to be done um, because obviously time is ticking, so. I have a couple of comments on that, but maybe I'd like to invite Mr. Delaney to maybe give us, uh, and I know we can't commit you to this time frame, but what might be the, the, um, the, the timeline on signing and uh, um, re review by legal counsel, et cetera, for, for the, the contract that we have, and when might it be become live for us as a group to work with this particular group? And if you don't have that information, please understand this is not a, not pressuring you to do that, certainly, but if you have some sense of what the time frame might be, it might give us some help on how to figure out what we do at the next meeting or the following meeting. Thank you. Uh, it would be fully my expectation that once seven generations does their signature, the three town signatures would follow within the next uh, one to two business days. So next week is completely achievable. Um, I, th I, think, I think achievable is the most I can say, but yeah, we could, it's not an unreasonable expectation that we could have a kickoff next week. Um, the actual scheduling of all that, I will probably leave to Miss Moyston. Uh, or whoever the designated liaison is there. That, that's usually not my role. Absolutely. No, and, and thank you. And, and I hope that wasn't a, a put you on the spot moment. But I, I, mm -hmm. I think for us who are not in the, 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 the town uh, logistics world, I think just hearing something like that helps us frame our work going forward. Mr. Vernon Jones, um, you had a hand up. Well, I just wanted to check, Anthony, maybe you know, um, do we need to wait for town signatures to meet with them? Or if they're willing to, they sign and they're willing to meet with us, can we uh, have them at a meeting and be talking about the work? It's not my recommendation, uh, but there's, there's nothing prohibiting it. Uh, I mean, Seven Generations has, I, I've seen them in the uh, audience list previously. There's, uh, there's no reason they couldn't. Um, before I, you know, it's more risk to them than to us, frankly, you know, if they, if they put in some hours and then yeah, for whatever reason, the contract weren't executed, that's a, it's, it's not zero it, that, that puts them out more than it causes any material harm to the town, but yeah, yeah they, 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 they could, it's not usually the way we do it, but and can I just hop in and say that I am going to keep including them on the agenda until they meet. I don't think that they want to meet until the contract is signed all the way through, which is understandable. So, um, and I also feel just from, from speaking with an interactions that they kind of need to know what they're going to be doing at this first meeting ahead of time. So if you guys have, if we could kind of plan that a little bit, some of that out today, 
that would be very helpful so that when I send them the invite, that information's included. So their responses, so they don't feel like they've been invited to something and haven't been told why. Thank you both. Excuse me, I'm switching screens here. So um, let me get back to. Thank you. Sorry, Russ. Uh, I don't know if I, I just came back. I was moving around here a little bit. I don't know if Ms. Walker Mr. Alicia, or Mr. Vernon Jones I think was Alicia first. had her hand up first. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ms. Walker, please. Um, I was just wondering which portions of the bid we awarded to seven generations. Was it all portions or just portion A? A and B. No, uh, no one was awarded C. A and B. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Can we get the folks on the town side to review the contract before seven generations has signed it so we know ahead of time if there are any obstacles? Uh, the people on the town side have have reviewed it. So uh, I mean, I, Mr. Bockelman had a hand in drafting it. So uh, yeah, there, there won't be the, the, there won't be any real review. There certainly won't be any changes requested by the town people afterwards. It's mostly just a matter of getting it in three people's hands. Thank you. Before I want to go, before we go further, uh, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Cage. Thank you, Mr. Cage. I see you on the screen, as we all do. Appreciate your work going forward. And we're just in the in the, the process of talking about item A on the, on the agenda. So glad you're here. Um, so let me just let me say too, there are a couple of things that are coming up in in, in this discussion and. I, I think it, it may be segueing a little bit into what we have to do in terms of deeper discussion around item A, is that uh, we're anticipating that the signature will happen very quickly. We're anticipating that we will be engaging in conversation as a group with our consultant uh, group. And I, I would like to suggest that we uh, begin, uh, we initiate some conversation uh, with the idea of moving toward agreement on where we'd like to be as a group with the consultants as they're coming in the door. I think we have to have our, our, our platform kind of set in terms of what some of the initial stages of what we have to do are clear to them so that we, we're, we're, we're putting our, our matters out there in front of us and also I want to acknowledge the fact that we do have input already in terms of some recommendations and uh, thoughts and considerations. Um, excuse that phone ring, it'll go. It'll go away because I just hung up. Anyway, so um, yeah, so bringing some focus into ourselves, talking a little bit about a little more deeply, a little more in a more focused way about what it is we'd like to see as is some of the initial um, pieces of work we want the, uh, the, the consultants to focus on, but certainly we have to come to agreement as a group as to what we feel is important. We started that process, we received, um, I know some, what I call preliminary straw poll kind of suggestions re regarding recommendations from, I believe Ms. Pat, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, uh, Mr. Cage, and I don't have it in front of me right now. Was there another? I think Deborah. both. Miss Miss Owen. And I also and sent some recommendations. Miss Ferrer. Ferrer. So yeah. I, I think you know, in appreciation at the same time of, of those contributions, we 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 do have to focus a little bit, and so I'd like to steer that discussion toward a more a more focused kind of um, uh, approach as they're coming in the door. That said, I also want to let the group know that I know that uh, it's very possible, given what Mr. Delaney said uh, a moment ago, that it's possible to meet with the uh, with our new consultant group possibly as early as next Wednesday. I don't know what they have to do in terms of getting ready for um, a meeting with us but that's very possible for next Wednesday. I also wanna put in the mix that, um, and this is maybe crossing into a couple of other agenda items, but that I do know that uh, Chief Scott Livingstone 
is available for a meeting with us, excuse me, on our March 10th meeting, which I think is anticipating that we will have a not March 10th meeting already, but, and that we would have to uh, be able to prepare for that as well. So the, the two major items seem to be right now, the uh, initial conversation with our consulting group and our initial conversation with the chief of police of the Amherst Police Department for next week. So those are two possibilities. So that's a little bit of a lengthy <laughs> prelim, if you will, but I wanna put those things out there as, as possibilities for next agenda items. Most importantly right now, I think is having a conversation uh, amongst us in the group about what it is we'd like to see happen for our, um, you know, for the consultants coming in. Uh, any any opening comments on that, Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, I very much appreciate Mr. Delaney being with us, but I wonder, do we need to ask him to stay with us if he's has other things to do? I was going to put Mr. Delaney in time out right now myself. I was just I just want to make sure we just like cleared the decks with him, make sure he don't have any any other other uh, things we have to to talk about. And if, if we if we don't have any, you know, uh, certainly, Mr. Mr. Delaney, we appreciate your. Well, um, this is Deborah. I just had one yeah, question. Ahead, I just wanted to kind of say one thing before Mr. Delaney leaves. It's just to kind of obviously, you know, goes without saying, but just to keep us posted, especially if there's any other changes, because you know, for me, you know, big priority even before you know, uh, Chief Livingstone is just really talking to these consultants and getting them going, getting them clear, getting them on the same page in terms of what we need them to do. Um, so obviously if there's any other, you know, updates that are contrary to what we're thinking, which is to meet with them, you know, next meeting, you know, please let us know as soon as you can. Thank you. Important. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. That, that's an important comment. And the, the only reason I, I mentioned too, and I, I'll go to you, Mr. Delaney in a second. The only reason I mentioned both uh, Chief Livingstone and this work is that if if our work is going to be more focused on the consultant and in engaging the consultant group coming in, I want to be sure that we're not compromising our ourselves on conversations with either the consultant group or the the chief of police. So if, you know, I don't want to say very openly, if one or the other comes first or second, we have to talk about that. I just want to give the courtesy, especially to the chief of police to say, hey, if it can't be the 10th, then maybe it could be the 17th. But I, I want us to prepare adequately for uh, uh, Chief Scott Livingstone if he were to be here and that we have a, a coherent and uh, and, deep conversation that informs our, our practice going forward. So that's, that's the, the two things I wanted to say. Mr. Delaney? Uh, yeah, if, the, if there is nothing else for me, then I, I probably will leave. But uh, I want to thank the working group for uh, all the work you put in. To, it, was a, it, it was not easy on anybody to, to get this together in the time frame we did. Um, but I, I think we're, I, I'm pretty pleased with the product. And uh, I will be, Ms. Moyston and I are in contact pretty much daily with, with updates. So if there are any changes or roadblocks, uh, we'll definitely be in, I'll definitely be in touch with the working group through Ms. Moyston. And um, yeah, until the next consultant, uh, and uh, I look forward to working with you on that. Thank you so much. And I appreciate your communications to, to us all on that. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. Thank Have a good you. Evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. So I just, what I did was, these are the recommendations that everybody kind of sent in and because there were duplicates, I just broke them up into the three parts so that you all can see them or add more. Um, and I guess I tried to do it so that it, we could, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, 
put them in order of priority so we could prioritize it by the budget year because the FY22 budget is still has to be in by April 9th. And so the consulting group will have worked three to four weeks by then, hopefully, like we're hoping that they start on the 10th. Um, mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you guys want to have this already in motion so they can kind of pick up where we you guys left off or if you're just I don't really have a sense of direction with the recommendations and what I'm supposed to be doing with them. Let me initiate the conversation if I may to say first of all thank you Ms. Moyston uh, among all the other things you're, you're doing to, to pull those kinds of things together for us and um, one thing I see that is very critical for us to pay attention to is, and we, we, we talked about, about this in the, in terms of meeting timeframes and deadlines. I think that uh, that issue of looking at the timelines where our consultant group may have about three weeks to come up with some recommendations, it's an extremely tight timeline and I'd be disingenuous to say to all of you that I think I'm cool with that. I'm not. I, I think it's really, it's a tight timeline. It's a lot of work involved. And I think our, our ability to, to, to focus on something that uh, we can probably, as they say, in, in some cases, a small win, if you will, going forward to get things initiated. I, I did take a look at uh, a lot of the rec the commentary that was submitted by um, folks on the on the working group, and uh, it, it it seems to be a theme that I'm seeing, and I'd like for your response. And I guess this will launch the conversation. Uh, there seems to be a, a a collective energy around what we might call a community responder to um, situations or calls in our police department. And I, I'd like to offer that as maybe a launching point to um, be, begin our discussion and maybe as a point of focus. And if, if I could take some liberty to do that, I'd like to do that. It doesn't prohibit, <laughs> prohibit you certainly from moving in any other direction, but I think the idea of focusing on something that we can give to the, uh, share with the consultant group and also agree upon as a committee, as, excuse me, as a working group would be a very powerful statement right off the beginning, you know, at the beginning. So let me stop talking and open up discussion around this. And thank you again, Ms. Moist. And that, that's a, a, a large body of work you've done there. And I, I certainly appreciate it. And we'll all certainly take a look at it. So let me let me go over there and just open up the, the floor. And we're on agenda item A. So any comments around that relative to the anticipation of our working with the consultant group? Ms. Pat. So first of all, Ms. Moistin, thank you for putting this uh, together for us. I feel that every, we should prioritize everything and present to the town council. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was um, working on my proposed um, recommendation, I kind of felt that there is a link between some of the alternative public safety to reparation. Not necessarily in the sense of reparation for black folks, but you know, with over policing with the youth, for example, like we have to have um, a center for the youth and also the cultural center. I was thinking that BIPOC families, we have no place, you know, that we feel that is safe for us to gather and do our thing. So I, I'm just, you know, I don't know other people's thinking, but I couldn't help connecting reparation 
and alternative services. I just want to put that out to everyone. Other, other comments? Ms. Ferrer. Uh, yeah, so I guess for me, um, you know, we're going to be meeting with the consultants next week. I guess for me, I'm kind of putting that out there just also because I need like some clarification um, in terms of what we're going to be telling them, right? Because for me also, it's like we had already, we had said a list of things that we needed to get done and that they sent in the, the bid proposal to us, right? So, you know, one would be, you know, meeting them next week, it'd be introductory, you know, learning a little bit about themselves, what's the strength, right? Um, getting a sense from them, you know, what they wrote in that bid, right? They said they were gonna do X, Y, Z, P, D, Q. So, okay, what are you gonna do? You know, what are your ideas? I would like to hear that from them, right? And then I would like to then go into, okay, these are the things that I want. And so for me, one of the things I understand that obviously we have our recommendations and we need to, you know, hone in on those because by April 9th, we need to send those out. But I also thought we were going to be talking to them about really getting more into the community. I mean, I don't even know what are on those surveys. We haven't even looked at the surveys, you know what I'm saying? So I need to, I need them, you know, me, that would be some priorities. Like I want you to look at the surveys. I need you to go out to the marginalized communities and find out because that's going to also inform, make sure that I'm I'm right in terms of the recommendations that I'm thinking about, right? Because all of the recommendations we've done has been preliminary to this point because I, I still don't think we've gotten a lot. You know, I still, still think we need to get a lot more from the communities, especially communities that don't speak the language, communities that have been afraid to come in and talk to us, you know, and communities that we haven't heard from, you know, out there. So for me, that's a big part of what I want these consultants to do as we're also talking about, okay, these are preliminary recommendations. These are the things that we're, we're thinking about right now, but I wanna hear more from the community and, and the marginalized community. That's, that's the part that I'm really kind of worried about. So anyway, uh, those are the things that I'm thinking about in terms of, of talking with them, um, but I don't wanna just give them marching orders. I want them to also, I want, I want to hear from them too. What are their ideas in terms of, of, of performing the job we want them to perform? Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. And I think Ms. Moyston, you had your hand up after Ms. Ferreira. And then I, I have a comment unless someone wants to go before me. Ms. Ferreira, uh, Ms. Moyston, and then uh, Ms. Owen, and then I'll go. I was just curious, do you guys have not seen a copy of the revised bed? Has I have not. Of the contract? Okay. I will send a copy of the contract to everyone. Thank you. May I ask, since you brought that up, are, is there some language in there that is uh, substantially different in ways that might in, in, in impact or inform our discussion right now? That, that you that you know about I don't know not that I'm aware of it's okay. pretty much similar to what the if is uh, the bid some things have just been more specified but I don't know that it would Thank limit you. us I appreciate you just sending that to all of us uh, Miss Owen I just want to echo what Miss Ferreira said because I felt the same way with my recommendations um, this week I took some time to meet with the Holyoke Community College Chair of Language and Latinx Studies because I do feel mm -hmm. like a gap in our work is access to translation and interpretation services. So I just wanted to bring that up to the group. And I think that's something that the consultants can work on. Thank you. The comment I wanted to make is, and then I'll go to you, Mr. Vernon Jones, is that it's, it's a blessing and a curse working with a bunch of people who are trying to think systemically about this. The blessing is thank you that the, none of these things sit in isolation. Uh, and I think about Ms. Ms. Pat's recommendations and I, I, I look at those things. They, they are talking about the relationship with the police department, but they are talking about systemically what, how this relates to the uh, issues with youth in particular, for example. So not ignoring that. And I think, so this is systemic thinkers think broadly about the connections and the reconnections and the cross connections that are happening in our team. So I appreciate that. I'm just, I'm just saying that I'll, I appreciate it. And I think it informs our work. At the same time, how do we distill 
some of that down to a point where we can say, you know, let's do this right now and see if we can, you know, catch a small win there and not lose the, the pieces that we need, um, that we need to focus on, not, not lose any, any of that. But how can we begin, and I think this falls into what Ms. Ferreira is saying, how do we begin to build a relationship with the people who are we inviting into this, this working community, let's call it. This is a, a working community. This is a learning group for all of us. How do we invite the seven, uh, seven generation in so that they're working collaboratively, cooperatively, and coherently with us? I, 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 we are the focus of this. And we, you know, consultants work for us and with us. I want to say both it's an and with us. And so, you know, making sure we're on the right track, getting to know them, how they, they work, getting to understand what, how, you know, what they need to do their work well, those kinds of things. And I think I'm trying to go back a little bit to Ms. Ferreira's work, comments to say, let, let, let's get there really quickly so that uh, they can be, you know, a really forceful piece in our work. Um, you know, contributing, a contributing piece of which they, I'm sure they want to be. And, uh, but I, I think the guidance and um, direction we can offer them with our prior thinking, which has been going on uh, for three months now, is gonna be useful for them. You know, they're, they're doing their own inventory, I'm sure of us. So let's, let's, let's help them, let's, let's, let's bring them in, tell them what we know and begin to show them where our interests and focus lie. So now that I said that, I forgot whose hand was up. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I heard Ms. Moyston say that seven generations doesn't want to come to a meeting unless they're prepared and know what we want. Um, we, I'm concerned about the timeline. So my recommendation is we say to them, listen, this first meeting is, first of all, for us to go through some of what is in the bid, in the contract, and for us to clarify for you a little bit about what, what it is we want. Secondly, is to bring them up to date on uh, where we are leaning and what we, where we've already decided, if anything. Uh, and then third, to set some priorities because the timeline is so short, what do we want them to start on? Now, if they're ready to tell us, here's how we would do this, that's great. But if they're not ready, I still want them to meet with us so that we can lay out some of our expectations and priorities. Um, so I, I would hope, and Jennifer, I don't know where this falls to you, that that could be communicated to them immediately, that that's what we uh, are proposing for next Wednesday. Um, so the reason why I stated I didn't think that they wanted to come without, you know, having a full understanding of what they were coming from is because they clearly wrote that in an email that they were invited to a meeting and they didn't know why, but I had had a conversation with D. Shabazz before I sent that email inviting them. So I'm just, I don't, I, I will do my best to ask them to come whether the contract is finished or not, but I well, like I can't, you know, say you have to attend this meeting, especially if the contract's not signed. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a short time period, but I just, I um, will do my best to encourage them to come to the next yeah. meeting. That's all I can do. I guess I would also propose that we authorize our, I mean, in addition to Jennifer's communication, we authorize our chair to speak with them directly uh, so that them getting started doesn't need to wait for a meeting or until another meeting comes around. Um, is, is that agreeable to people? I mean, I want them to be with all of us so we can all lay it out, but if the timeline is, is off, uh, I'd rather, you know, we delegate 
Paul or two people or whatever to get them started, even if they haven't met with us yet. Mr. Wiley, I'd be willing to do that with you. So it could be a two person job and not a one person job. Yeah, but I, again, I think we need to kind of be clear. What are we asking? I know, um, Mr. Vernon Jones, you've already kind of set some, some, but we need to make sure. So, Paul, I mean, what I'd like to hear is, okay, what are we asking them to do? I want it to be point one, point two, point three, point four, because I think that's what Ms. Moison was saying, and I saw their email too, and that's what they were asking. So what exactly are we asking them to do, whether it's you all communicating it to them or us meeting with them, you know what I'm saying? I want us just to be crystal clear because we have to start this communication with them on on a, a clear you know clear path. Well, and in terms of the suggestions and comments I just heard, <clears throat> the backdrop of this is that, uh, and I want to re reflect a little bit on what Mr. Vernon Jones said and what Ms. Morrison said earlier. If we're looking at the timelines that we're dealing with. Um, we have already gone through a couple of weeks of working with the town to secure a consultant. And now we're in another week of looking at trying to secure a signature on the contract, which is under review by uh, the, the, the town, which has already done their review um, and legal counsel. So, you know, already we're into a pattern where they're going to be starting their work, you know, at the, at, at best, next let's say, let's just say next Wednesday at our meeting. And if we're looking at, is it April 9th, Ms. Moyston? Yes. Where we're looking at first recommended, it gives them three weeks to do their work. I, I, I think without reservation, I would say that's untenable unless it's very clear and very focused about what, what we you want them to do. And uh, I think this is, this brings to a, a, a point, uh, Ms. Ferreira's question, like, you know, what are we asking you to do? And I think it's a combination of, of what we're asking you to do and what you signed on as for contractually to do. This, this, is a, this is a kind of reality check because, you know, honestly, this is a lot of work. This is a lot of work and we have to be very thoughtful about this. So um, let me stop and go to, uh, I, I think, um, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Ms. Pat, thank you. Um, I think it would be helpful for us to decide if there is certain information or certain tasks we can ask them to complete within those three weeks. That would be helpful for us to get the recommendations out for April 9th um, and sort of give them like a timeline or an order. Because I know that they have the bid that we put out but that's a very broad list of what we want them to do. So maybe if we can prioritize that for them or if we can decide as a group, what's one thing or one piece of information we would need from them by the ninth to be able to feel good about our recommendations. Thank you. And, and, and I think this is what I was referencing maybe a, a bit vaguely, but about focus in terms of right now the conversation about our relationship with this consulting group and what we want them to do and what we think we can make happen with them, you know, in a very short period of time. Miss Pat, I'm sorry, thank you. That's okay. Um, I'm agreeing with everybody's input. And last week I remember comment, commenting that there's no way the group will be ready for us today from business perspective. I know it takes a while to, you know, finalize contract. Here's my thinking. We've already started brainstorming, you know, what we would like to ask the group. I would like to recommend that we put something together tonight, brainstorm, and then have Ms. Marston or our chair or co-chair communicate with them. However, when they come next week, I think we should let them present, let them tell us what they plan to do. Plus the information we've already given them that this is our expectation just to save time. Because if they're coming next week and we start telling them our expectation, we've already lost one week. But if we can communicate our expectation through email, then they come next week to present to us and respond to our expectation. That's just my suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, I agree with uh, Ms. Pat when she said, um, so that'll be good. But one thing that I I wonder, just so just for me, because I don't have it in front of me, and uh, Ms. Moyston, you said you had that revised bid. I think we had put a, a timeline in there. I just like to know what that mm -hmm. timeline was. And then obviously then we could revise it based on the realities, right? But I think back then we didn't know these realities. And then like this, we can maybe include it within our expectations. So I can give you guys the timeline. I don't have the, the final copy after <laughs> Paul revised it and it was sent to them. I don't have that copy. I have the copy that was sent to Paul for revisions. And I don't know what those revisions were, but I do have a copy of what the um, timeline is. So I can verbally read that from off of the, the list here. And then I just wanted to say a few things. Tashina had to step off for a moment and she'll log on shortly. And I just wanted to make the correction that the town ha has sent it for Signer has sent the bid, the, mm -hmm. the consultants have the bid and we're waiting for their attorney or, or, or their review of it to come back to us. Somebody had mentioned that the town had it. It's not, that's, we um, have sent it. So, and um, just one moment. And so the kickoff meeting with CSWG was scheduled for the third. A progress meeting was scheduled for March 19th. A draft timeline for outreach and goals was scheduled for 3-26-2021. You guys know that, sorry. And then the final plan, a draft, well, let me go back and say this. The part A progress meeting is 319. Part B draft timeline for outreach and goals is 326. Part B final plan is due on 42. Part A draft report is due on 423. And part A final report is due on 430. Would you, would you ind indulge me a bit, please, and just repeat that one more time? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So the kickoff meeting was scheduled for today. Right. The part A progress meeting was scheduled for 319. The Part B draft timeline for outreach and goals is scheduled for 326. The Part B final plan is scheduled for 42. And the Part A draft report is scheduled to be submitted by 423. And the final report is by 430. And so this, for the most part, it's still the same yeah. contract that was that we sent out for bid. Mm -hmm. There's just been a few things that have been um, revised on our end, and then we have to see if they want to make revisions or not, or or what they would like to do from there. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Whoever asked that, I'm just. I wish you could see how many screens I have up on my board right now. You could say like, Me too. he's nuts. But anyway, anyway, thank you for that question. Um, comments in response to what Ms. Moyston had to say? Comments that will move us forward in this discussion? I do want to say, I need to take it. I will call on you, Ms. Ferreira. I do need to take a moment to go off screen to deal with something. But uh, I will, I'll have the audio on so I can listen. I'll be back in a moment. And I, and I apologize for that. But uh, so, Ms. Ferreira, you were next. And um, Ms. Owen, you'd be so kind if I don't come back in time. If someone raises their hand, would you be call on them, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. And I, I apologize for that. That's okay. Yeah, I, I guess my question is just in terms of like the dates. Um, so since we need to get something in, in terms of the, you know, the recommendations by, um, you know, by April 9th, um, you know, how does that configure with some of these dates that we have over here? I'm 
It, it, it doesn't necessarily, but I would suggest that you have a check-in with yeah. them and ask them what, you know, what they have done, you know, so I'm sorry, April 9th. So if at the April 7th meeting they come and then you ask them to, to give you, or maybe the week before an update of what they've been doing that can help you um, finalize your recommendations. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on there that lists specific April 9th recommendations. Yeah. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, Jennifer, is April 9th the, the date the town manager has to finish his budget? Yep. Yeah, so the town manager um, proposes the budget to the council on May 1st. And so typically um, everybody else has had their stuff in be prior to this April 9th date. So um, yes. It's okay. So the night is sort that. of a deadline for us getting anything to the town manager around the budget for the next year. And yep. part B, their final plan is due to us on the 2nd of April. So that gives us uh, a week to, to work with it uh, to decide what we want to give the town manager. So that part B dates are set to give us a week to put things together for the budget. Um, part A, with the outreach, we gave them an, an additional month. So they have until the end of April uh, to be working on outreach. Um, and that, that, that is the way we set it up when we, when we wrote the bid. Right, but my concern is that I thought people were looking for that outreach information to use for the recommendations and mine. Yeah, I, I think whatever outreach we have on the 2nd of April can inform our decisions, but I think many of our budget decisions um, are not gonna be that dramatically different. I mean, the details of how to do it are gonna come out of the outreach, but what the requests are and what the programs are, I think we're going to be in a position to um, put together our budget proposals, put together a recommendation about a program, uh, and then fine tune it later when we get more outreach. But at the budgetary level, I, I don't think what we learn from the outreach is going to change things that much. I think that they will have some great recommendations for FY23. If the ones that come in at the end of April. Uh, Ms. Walker. Will we be able to look at at least the responses to the survey that we've gotten so far before that date? Um, or is that something we can ask the consultant group to do with their first three weeks of time to help inform it a little bit? Oh yeah. It gets me every single time. There's not a meeting that goes by that that doesn't happen. Um, I am hesitant to send you guys like uh, the survey results because then that goes public and some people's like, I just have been nervous to send that out to you guys. Um, but the consultants can work off of that. Yes. Ms. Pat. So, I mean, that's a very good point, Alicia, that you raised, but I believe, and I can, and I'm not speaking for the group. I will think that they will go by whatever the contract that they agreed on to sign. Um, I don't recall on the path A having uh, any consulting firm to um, analyze survey for us. I don't recall us doing that in this bid. I could be wrong. Sorry, say that again, so, please, Ms. Pat. What? So what I'm saying is that um, I think it's a great idea if the if seventh generation can analyze survey result for us. However, I believe that they have to go by whatever contract that they agree with the town, and I'm I'm not remembering us asking for in the bid. For, for whoever gets the, the co contract to do uh, to analyze the online survey for us. So it would be an additional task. No. It's not. Well, 
It's its consultant will analyze all results and data, qualitative and quantitative okay. received. Is it result that they, they did? As a res is as that it, doesn't, it doesn't specify. So, so that's the ambiguity, you know, so that's one of, why not you put down as our expectation to see what their response will be. Yeah. Because the way I read it is survey, survey, all survey results will be the, the work that they, whoever got the, the contract did for themselves. You know, it could be interpreted, you know, differently by different people. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Ferrer had her hand up next. Yeah, I mean, I'm agreeing with uh, Ms. Walker. I mean, I think whatever, like the survey results, because that's all part of the outreach and, and, and what we had already started. So that's part of, you know, for me, our interpretation, that's part of what they, they need to, to focus on. And then whatever else, you know, and I, I and I didn't have those dates. So thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones, for clarifying in terms of Part A, Part B, because I was all confused about that. I don't have the bid in front of me, you know, so that wasn't clear. So I think whatever they can do, you know, up until the time when they're giving us that, that you know, kind of the preliminary, um, you know, information with the final, like on 4-2, whatever outreach they can do, whatever uh, survey uh, analysis they can, they can do, the better. Because obviously our recommendations stem from, you know, a lot from obviously the data, as well as what people are saying to us in our community. You know, and that's why I also would want them, you know, if they have time, I know it's obviously short on time, but if they're able to, and that's hopefully we can get them those expectations so that they can give a presentation. Maybe they have ideas in terms of how to get more information out of especially the marginalized, you know, folks and stuff. So anyway, whatever they can get, I want them to include it so that then it, it, it really kind of support, it really would give us a lot of cr credibility for the recommendations that we're making. Mr. Wiley. And back, thank you, Ms. Ms. Owen. You can keep doing this if you want to. I'm, I'm <laughs> cool with, with that. I just, just thought I'd raise my hand since you were, you were now the, 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 the chair of the meeting. But I, I wanted to ask Ms. Moisson, and I don't have it in front of me right now, um, but in the language of the contract, usually there, there's some, maybe not in this case, but in, in, in some cases where some of the work is just naturally ambiguous because we don't know what it's, what's going to happen, is there a, a place in our contract which allows us to say by mutual agreement, quote unquote, we can um, modify the language of the contract to accommodate the needs based on uh, new discoveries, based on new information, based on new direction we need to take? Because if if it's very fixed in certain ways and we, we I, I don't want us to handcuff ourselves. At the same time, I recognize the willingness and capability of this, this new consulting group to, to actually go in different, direction, different directions pretty flexibly. But I, I, I'm just wondering, and that's not something I, I have to know right now, but maybe that's just something that could enter the conversation because if we do have that flexibility, you know, and I'm using quote unquote by mutual agreement on a particular clause or something, we say, hey, can we modify this a little bit based on what we know now, but we didn't know two weeks ago that we need to do, especially along timelines, especially around data collection and analysis, especially around um, trying to help us, you know, bring forth rationales um, and uh, reasons for why we're making our recommendations. I think those are very important things because it's not enough to make a recommendation. We have to understand the background of like, why are we making this recommendation? This doesn't come out of somebody's head all of a sudden. There's something backing that. It's either data or, or you know, narrative or, or concrete data that we're getting, or um, there's something else that's feeding that process and we feel it's important. So I'm just wondering about that out loud, Ms. Moyston. And uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Mo Ms. Owen, I'll, I'll take over from here if you, unless you wanna keep going. No, you can you can take over. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say that, Dad. I was trying to get out of it for a minute. <laughs> 
So I don't see anything specific in here, but I'm just looking at a glance. So okay, at a glance, I, and I don't mean there's to research right there right now, but yeah. I think the theme of what I'm saying is is clear, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, last week I asked Mr. Delaney whether or not if if we wanted as part of the outreach effort, we wanted them to have conversations with uh, people they were outreaching to about envisioning Amherst without white supremacy. You know, could we specify that? Uh, and his comment was that he thought that was well within the uh, the notion of you know, doing outreach and what we had described. Um, so I think there is some variety, but I, I really like this idea of asking them to analyze what we've got from the survey uh, and maybe from the two hearings as well and write that up by the 2nd of April. I mean, that's part of part A that they don't have to finish until the end of April but we wanted to inform our recommendations. So I think the new outreach can happen later, but the data we already have, I think we should ask them to summarize and analyze and write up by 4-2. And then for me, the next priority is, okay, what else are we gonna ask them to do for sure by 4-2? And I think we kind of need to go through part B of the bid, you know, this is what, and, and decide what, what's most important to us uh, for them to do in the first three weeks. Ms. Pat. Very good point everybody is making. My style is it's always good to have a plan B, okay? You know, we have not seen the contract. And so if it's outside the contract and we want to negotiate with them, like Mr. Wally had mentioned, like mutually agreed, I'm all for that. But what if they come back and said, we're sticking to the contract? That's what our attorney said. I just want to, us to prepare for backup plan. What if they say they're not going to analyze something that they didn't conduct? And I, to be honest with you, with the subcommittee that we worked on, I remember that um, very, very well. And I was thinking of what Ms. Marston had mentioned over at several meetings, that there are some people who you know, did the survey, they don't want to be identified. And for that reason, I assume that is something that will be handled by Ms. Jennifer. Like, am I, do people, are people following what I'm saying? Yes. So I wasn't thinking when the subcommittee was working on 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 on, a, on the document, I wasn't thinking that whatever we did, the work that we did would be analyzed by the winning bidder. That was my thinking. Maybe, yeah. Mr. I mean, Payton. it would be great if they analyze it. It would make our, 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 our life a lot easier. I would love them to agree that they would do it for us. But for us to think about plan B, what if they didn't? What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira, please. Well, just on the confidentiality, if when people answered the survey, they could put their name on or not. So if they didn't want their name on it, then their name isn't there. Uh, so the data should be able to be reviewed by anybody without violating confidentiality. True. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. Excuse so, me, Ms. Smith Moyston, Ms. Ms. Ferreira had her hand up, and then um, Ms. Pr Ms. Owen. Yeah. So I guess you know, again, I don't have the bit in front of me, so I guess I'm confused about what it was that we didn't say that would not let them do the survey. I mean, I think it, it, in there we we did state that they needed to look at the data and qualitative, and analyze whatever information we have gone, which would include the form, which would include the survey. I mean, for me, that was definitely something I was thinking about them doing, not us, not Ms. Moyston, but them, you know, because they were the consultants that we were bringing in. Because then what's the point of bringing them in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, 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 I'm confused, you know, as to why it is that they can't look at the surveys and can't look at the forum or any other data that's relevant to what we've already, you know, if we're pointing them towards something, they need to, to look at it 
to in order to meet these timeline and deadlines that we've set here. Mm -hmm. I will take in uh, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Owen, and then Ms. Moyston. I was under the same impression, and I think if we were to open the survey and it became um, public data or information through the town, it could be a double-ended sword because for people who shared information using like officer names and specifics, um, it puts them at risk to be retaliated against and maybe they won't feel as open to share things in the future. And the um, survey was supposed to be anonymous, so. Yeah, Ms. Moisten, thank you for your patience. Oh no, it's okay. I can, I mean, I can send the the link so that you guys can have access to to looking at it. I can try to do it that way. I don't know. I mean, I I understand. I just that this there. I don't see anything or any reason why the consultant couldn't look at the information right. and analyze yeah. that. Um, but that but that's because what I'm saying. I, I don't want to have access to these surveys. I want I them to I look at it. I don't. The, the, the consultants need to look at it and then give us a report on it. I don't mm -hmm. want to have access to the survey. You know, I have no yeah. interest. You know, me, uh, they need they need yeah. to do that and 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 bring a, up a report of okay, what are what are some of the, the the patterns that we saw in terms? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of surveys that are going to share pretty similar information, and then some of the other ones that are going to be a little bit different, a little bit unique. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not going to say I don't have the time to go look at surveys. Not, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm well, not going. So but I guess me, a subcommittee can go ahead and. Go. Yeah, let me let me swing back, Ms. Moyes. I don't know if you finished your comment before Ms. Ferrer made her comment. Good. But well, I, uh, if you yeah, maybe incorporate ahead. what she just said in your response as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So um, I'm just looking at it, and it says. Part A, community engagement, consultant will assist with the community safety working group with various methods of public outreach, which may include, but are not limited to, consultant will analyze all results and data. So I, the word all to me signifies that, that, yeah. is, that it's our stuff, it's their stuff, it's stuff that they obtain later. And honestly, I'm not a data analyst, right? And because these are open-ended questions, the survey monkey cannot perform the same type of analysis as it does when there's like a multiple choice or like yes or no answers, right? So then I'm just, I'm not a data analyst. I would do my best, but I think that the, the, the consultants would be able to do this. Don't be too quick to volunteer as a data an analysis person. Oh, I'm saying I'm not a data analyst. I'm because you know, you know how people are. You know, they'd be like, oh, good. <laughs> but let, let me let me just let me try to hold this conversation in the in the air for a moment and go back to a point to, to ask just folks, are we leaning toward wanting to meet with our our newly contracted consultant group next Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. It, it, okay, so I'm, I'm preempting and I'm saying both at the same time, we're meeting next Wednesday and we also meet with them next Wednesday. I, I'd like to have the group think about, you know, what do we want to, we, we just want to send them an invitation to say, hey, come. We want to have an invitation that maybe says something to the effect that uh, I wrote some notes down there, coming off my little mini break there, um, that we, well, first of all, we, we want to introduce, we want them to introduce themselves to us. We want to know who they are um, and, and not, not like this long outrageous thing, but you know, just like introduce themselves to us so we get to know them, get to see them we get to start building a relationship with them. The second thing would be to say, here are some initial things we'd like to have you engage in on our behalf that launches our work as a, as a committee. And that might include the data, data analysis of the surveys, for example. Um, it, uh, it might be uh, reviewing the uh, two um, community forums that that we had. So what they can what can they garner narratively from the, the forums? What can they they garner 
more, more objectively from the surveys and narratively, that would be the, the initial platform from which they work, in addition to figuring out who they are. And then also leave us some room to have a conversation with them about all the things we're concerned about, the timelines, the, the things that, you know, where, where, where are your flex points? I, I'd like to not think that we are so fixed and hardened within a contract. I'd almost like to like to call an agreement, especially with these folks who are, you know, well situated to, to, to help us. Can we have that conversation to say, do you see where we are? How can you join us in where we are in terms of our timelines and those kinds of things? I just like to know what how that sits with with people here um, in terms of a next meeting sort of platform, if you will. Ms. Walker. Um, I think it's and then a great idea. Oh, sorry. I think it's a great idea for us to invite them to come next week, but I also don't think that we should expect that they would be able to. Uh, just because we don't know still that the contract will be finalized by then. And then also like if it was finalized the day before that they would then be prepared to be meeting with us the next day. Um, but I do think that we should extend the invitation and we should put together some sort of like agenda or loose outline for them as to what we would be expecting for our first meeting so that they are prepared for when they are able to meet with us. Were you, you talking offline with um with Ms. Pat about contingency planning or something here? Was that going on Not you trying to keep a secret from us? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I see, I'm, I'm joking, but I, I see what you're saying. I know saying. you're joking. <laughs> I, I know, but it's, it's a joke, but it's not. I mean, I think I, I, I hear what you're saying, Ms. Walker, and I thank you for that. At the same time, I think I'm getting back. I don't know if Mr. Vernon Jones made this comment, but I don't, I slash the group, we don't want to be handcuffed by you know or or slow down by the need to, to to launch a conversation with this consultant group to get their work done i mean really you know if so if they don't sign a contract until monday and then we don't they don't have enough time to prepare for wednesday then we're talking about when you know, it could be whenever. I would just say a little bit the following Wednesday. I, I would hate to see us go down this road where uh, th they're, they're preparing, which is great, but I have a feeling too that our conversations with them may help them prepare quick, more quickly if we were just able to have the conversation. And I don't think there's any problem having a conversation with them from what I heard earlier from Mr. Delaney and the earlier conversation we had. So let me, let me just stop, Ms. Ferreira. Well, I mean, I think we, I, I wanted to kind of go back to what Ms. Pat has said um, before and, you know, just kind of like, you know, why don't we just set out like what you were just talking about, right? Uh, Mr. Wiley, like set out the list of things that we, we want them to kind of do and so that they can already start thinking about it. You know, send that to them, email it. Like you and, and, and Ms. Owen can send email that to them, right? If they haven't signed a contract or whatever, if they can't, if they're not able to meet with us, you know, on Wednesday, they they have that. That's what they so that they can already be thinking about it, be preparing for it. And then you could even break it down in terms of, okay, if you are ready to go, let's say they sign a contract on Monday and Tuesday they're ready to go, but they're not ready to go with a full presentation, they can just come in for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to introduce themselves to it, right? It's a conversation. Exactly. We can get the ball rolling. So I think in your email to them, you can kind of lay it out like that, right? That what we want to do is at least get, get things going. So it could just be a, a, an introduction and then an introduction to us too, because I'm sure they're going to want to know who we are, right? Introduction conversation. But obviously if there's more time and if they feel more prepared, these are some of the expectations so that that's already in their mind and they're already working on it, you know, whether it be for next Wednesday or thereafter. So anyway, that's what I was thinking. I, I, I appreciate hearing that. And I, I think all of us have to un, understand that there's an urgency about this for all of us. In addition to the fact that we have yet to get into the, the deeper conversations about our timeline, which include things like, is the CSWG going to be an ongoing 
um, working group serving the town or are we gonna go in some other vein um, that we have yet to discuss or decide upon? So these kinds of things are going down the line, but I think not to look, go too far out there, but um, I'm feeling the, the inclination to push a meeting, maybe push is too strong a word, but invite a meeting um, for a conversation with the group in anticipation of their working with us by next Wednesday. And I, if that's something that the group would like to do, I'd like to move on that. However we do it, whether it's Ms. Owen and, and, and me or, or, or Ms. Owen and Ms. Walker or, you know, whoever does the work, we're, we're here together, but that we extend this thing to them with a particular framework for how that meeting needs to go. And um, I, I, do, I would just, I don't, because I, I do think even in that meeting, we can begin to narrow our focus a little bit with them because we're able to hear from them and what they're thinking. And I think narrowing the focus on what we can get moving quickly and get some traction uh, in terms of our recommendations might be useful for us. So but that, that's my comment. Ms. Pat. Again, I like what everyone is saying. I think we're saying almost the same thing, but very differently. I will imagine this group, they are community members and they wanna work with us. And I will imagine that they'll be flexible with us. I think um, the stop, stumbling block will probably be timing for them. Would they have enough time, you know, to do all that? So I'm hoping that they will agree to analyze our surveys and the two forum. The, for, the two forum alone will, will probably take them like five hours or something like that to listen to and, and, and analyze. And that's, you know, time consuming for them. So when I'm talking about backup plan is, if they feel that they can you know, do all the work within the short time frame, what do we do? And again, Mr. Wiley, you raised the, the issue of how long is this group going to last? If the town is going to disband by September, then what? So there are a lot of issues that play into this just for us to bear in mind. I, like all of you, I would like them to analyze the work, you know, the work we already done, but if they don't, if they say they don't have enough time to do it, then what, what do we do? I, I, I'll, I'll keep bringing that up just, you know, for us to be thinking about backup. Yeah, I, yeah, I know you will. <laughs> People don't listen to me until, Because you know, I've known I you, I've known you, so. you a long time as Pat, and I How said- How many times I told I you so? But let me just say this very quickly and then I'll move to, I don't even know, I, I, Ms. Ms. Moisten or Ms. Ferreira, who was, Ms. Moisten was first. Let me just say very quickly here, I'd like for them to tell us what they can and cannot do. I don't want to assume that they might not be ready. Let them tell us they won't be ready or they will be ready. And that would be a conversation we could have on Wednesday, regardless of what the status of the signing is. Um, Ms. Moisten. Yep. I just wanted to make comment on what Ms. Pat had said. There are still things like this group ends June 30th and there's still a oh. whole second end of a bid, right? <laughs> so there are things that you guys I can start thinking. I don't know how you guys want to do it, but uh, apparently you can't put a bid out and then not have a group responsible for it afterwards. And so there are still things and which is why I made the list because those kind of all of those items that everybody listed are on that list and you can kind of prioritize them that way, right? So if you feel like it's something that needs to wait for the consultant, then we can wait for it for the consultant. But if you guys aren't here past June 30th, that's a problem, yeah. right? Like any way that we look at it and I don't know that we do or don't need the consultant to define that answer there. If that's the but yeah. Good point. Yeah, Ms. Ferreira, thank you for waiting. So I guess like just to answer what you the question you were asking, um, Ms. Moyston, I mean, I think we have that part B in terms of what we need, the other part of the recommendations we need to make. So we need to make those regardless. You know what I'm saying? Um, whether we do that second part of the bid or not, because right now it doesn't even seem we don't even have money to do that second part of the bid, unless um the town 
gets the money from the police or wherever else, that's not going to happen. So we need to, to, to get the other part done. Um, so, you know, you know, that needs to happen and it needs to happen by June 30th. Even if we, one of the recommendations are that there becomes a standing committee that includes members of this group and, and, you know, moving forward, that could be one of the recommendations that we make, you know, moving forward. But in terms of the consultants, um, I, I, you know, I'm just kind of going off of what Mr. Wiley said. I mean, my thing is, listen, they, 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 um, they stated a whole bunch of stuff that they said they're going to be able to do. I, I, we need to just make sure we ask them to do what they need to do because we're paying them quite a bit of money. You know what I'm saying? So they understood the timeline in terms of, you know, that it was going to be very short and everything. And, you know, we got work to do. So, you know, they're a great group. And I think, you know, I, I think we can't just come up with, well, you know, I think we need to be firm, like, okay, this is what we need you all to do. And like Mr. Wiley said, if they can't do it for whatever reason, I need to know why and, and so on and so forth. But I want to ask, okay, this is what we need. Let's get this done. Because we have a timeline we need to meet. And, and that was very clear in the bit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vernon Jones. I've been sitting here looking at this part B of our <clears throat> bid, which I assume is the same language in the contract. Um, you know, where the report is due by April 2nd, um, which gives them three weeks to work on it. Um, and I guess I would like to propose, and whereas the outreach, their report isn't really due till the end of April. I think what I would like to propose to them is that in exchange for them analyzing the survey results by April 2nd, we would give them an extension on the elements of part B that are really more general about police reform in general and are not specific to creating an alternative community responder program. So, I mean, there's one that says consultant will provide research on how other communities are addressing police reform and, and eliminating racism and policing. I absolutely want them to do that, but I don't feel like we have to have that by April 2nd. What I want by April 2nd are the things that are really about the alternative community responder thing, including some things about how do you use peer specialists and what are some options for how we might implement it over time? Do we start with a pilot? Do we, you know, how, how much does it grow in the first year? Uh, what are some other towns doing? <clears throat> um, I think we ought to hold them to the contract deadline for that. But the more general research about police reform, uh, in a sense, really fits more with phase two of our work. And it'd be fine to give them a little extension on some of that if, if they're interested in that. Well, just in response, Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, what you're you're saying too, I, I think it, what you're saying, creates some of the, the the content for the discussion we would have with them on Wednesday. I I think this is an appropriate time to bring it up. You know, we I, I you know we 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 do know these folks to some degree in our community, um, in addition to their 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 proposal. So, um, you know, reaching out to invite them and let them know these are issues that, that are important, that that could be part of our agenda. And I think it's an important part because um, I really firmly believe we can help them prepare more substantially, if you will, by having a conversation with them. Right now, this is a paper exchange. And I, I think we need to, you know, engage them. And just the way you are articulating it right now is something they can certainly think about and, and deliberate over. And I don't think it, it, it sends us off a you know, cliff somewhere. But um, I guess I'm saying, I, I think this, what, what you're offering, I, I agree with, and it, it gives them some flexibility, but also I think we have to, you know, Put our stuff out there to them very concretely and quickly, so that there's no ambiguous uh, ness about where we're trying to go right now in the time frame that we have. Mr. Vernon Jones, I would hope that in before we close tonight, that we could go through 
what we've recommended so far or proposed specifically about the community responder program, um, which again, we had hoped to get started in the current budget year because there's money there to do it. I think we're close to agreement about a lot of things and have a few questions and we might even want to ask them to help us with the questions. But if we could sort of go through and see where we're in agreement about the community responder, uh, maybe that can move forward faster. I mean, I'd, I'd like to get the town manager working on setting it up as soon as we've got things, as soon as we figured out what we want. Other comments? Ms. Ferreira? Well, I guess I'm kind of confused about that. I mean, how can we get the town managers that isn't that like going to be part of our recommendations? I guess once we talk more about it, don't we have to recommend that in the report first before we the town manager can do that? I guess. Yes. Confused, but... Yeah. But but again, that reports due and. No, I know. Before I know we're going to. Yeah, no, I know we're going to we're going to. But but that's yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I guess <clears throat> we do need to do that, but I guess like. What I want is, Paul, if you, or Mr. Wiley, if you and um, Ms. Owen are the ones that are going to send it off, whoever's who going to send the stuff to the consultants? Can we just get a list of what it is that you are going to send? Maybe if you could send it to us and we can kind of review it and then, and then you know, see if there's any tweaks we need to make to it. And then you can send it out to the consultants. Good. We could do that now i'd rather i want i want to be sure that you know if we're having this conversation now let's all talk about what is going to be the content of that invitation uh, even in bullet fashion uh, you know Ms. Right, so we're going to do it yeah we're going to do it live you're saying you'd rather do it live well right now i mean if we could just quickly say like you know what are, what are we asking them to come prepared to do and um in that meeting and if you're asking um the group is asking Ms. Owen and, and me to collaborate on that, we can, and we can draft something very quickly. Uh, I'm saying we can, I can <laughs> tomorrow, but at this, you know, and so we can get that in the body of, a, of an invitation we could share very quickly with the group. Um, in addition to that, I hope, and, I, and I'm leaning a little bit toward back to what Mr. Vernon Jones was talking about, that we, we have some common interest right now in how the police department responds and using the, the term community responder mode. And I, I don't wanna lose, lose sight of that. And if, if that could possibly be incorporated in some way in the invitation to get them thinking about initially, you know, where we might be going with this to, 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 to launch their efforts, get them thinking about it, that, that might serve us well. And it, it might serve us well. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm asking two questions. One is, you know, would you all be able to give Ms. Owen and, and me right now in, in like a five minute flurry, here's the, what the content of the invitation. Here's what we want to say in the invitation and then we can continue some more conversation about the uh, community responder piece, which I think is a strong feature of any any recommendations we're going to put forward. Is that that okay with everybody? If you just like, let me let me just start right right now. I think what what I had initially was one, regardless of the status of the signing of the contract. We'd like to have them come and meet us, kind of a meet and greet uh, on the screen next Wednesday to talk a little bit about, you know, their work, our work, whatever. However, that uh, we can figure that out. But I'm just calling it some meet and greet because it's we don't know all the folks on on that on that group. The second thing I heard was that we would be asking them to do some uh, data analysis, one on the surveys. Um, the second on the community forums, and we can articulate this somewhere. 
those two things. And then may, maybe the fourth, you know, we could talk a little bit about, you know, timelines and where they might be feeling like they're sketchy on some stuff. But I, we could talk a little bit about timelines. And then in terms of, of substance, going back to Mr. Vernon Jones, Mr. Vernon Jones's comment about uh, community responder, because I think this is thematically, I've seen it in a, in a couple of, of instances says with the recommendations we've already talked about in preliminary fashion. The ones that come to mind is I'm thinking about Mr. Mr. Cage, for example, offered, uh, you know, was, was talking about youth being over involved with the police. So how could, how could a community responder maybe in some ways mediate some of that? I think we have homeless issues. I think we have medical issues. We have uh, mental health issues, those kinds of things. And so that, that seems to cross a, a number of things that people have talked about, in addition to some other stuff, which is systemic, which I talked about earlier, is it, systemic in terms of community programs and other kinds of more discrete kinds of things. But I, I think to target something would, would help them. So let me, let me stop there. Uh, are there anything, am I missing anything about the in, invitation that you wanna add, Ms. Pat? I would recommend that we just send, you know, all our recommendation to them for them to have an idea where we're coming from. Okay, mm -hmm. we, could do, we could do that. Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira. Well, I think for this invitation, I would strongly say that we would like you to come whether you are ready to present or not so that we can share with you where we are in our thinking um, and offer some thoughts about priorities and next steps. If you are ready to present, we would love to hear from you, your thoughts about how you plan or intend to proceed with the work. But we would like to meet with you regardless of whether you are ready or not for that presentation so that we can share some of our thoughts with you. Thank you, absolutely. Other input on the invitation, which I, I wanted to say again, if I didn't say it already, uh, Ms. Owen, maybe we could work on this tomorrow and yeah, we can we can throw our draft out to Ms. Moisson to get the people to see if we've covered all the bases. Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I would still like though to, to add, you know, like what you said, you know, the list of things um, there. Hmm. Um, hmm. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. regardless of whether you're ready to present or not, yes, we want to. We want to meet with you. We'll we'll talk to you about you know where we're at, or some expectations. Like let's say if they're not going to present, but you know, I would want them to know. Okay, but this is a list of things that that we're going to talk. You know, these are the, the list of expectations in terms of what we we want. You know, we want you all. What, what we want to talk to you all about, right? Exactly. Which was the list that you said. I think it would still be good because it's good for them to have time to think through some of those things. Right, yeah, um, and and for us to include that on there, um, and I do like about having the community responder. I mean, it's fine to add, you know, if, if you want to give them what our thinking in terms of our recommendations, that's fine. But it would probably be good to highlight the one that we all have a lot of similarities on, which is the community response. Okay, can we, Miss Miss Owen? Could we possibly use the list that Jennifer put together um, with everything consolidated so they can see where we're kind of at with everything? I haven't had a chance to look at that list myself. In it's a not way prioritized. That, Oops, sorry. No, that's okay. I was, <laughs> took the words out of my mind. I, I, it, it, it was a list. Um, sort of like the list I make for myself when I go to a grocery store. I actually do it aisle by aisle, but I never do it. And I walk all over the store. But anyway, um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Could we start with the community responder parts of Jennifer's list and see where we have yeah. agreement and where we still have things to work out right now? Sure. And I, I just wanna say, I didn't add this to the packet because I knew I, we would most likely be work. I was hoping that we would work on it and that way I could change, make the changes live instead of a, through a PDF. Understood. And, and again, th thank you for taking a, a, a minute that I'm sure you didn't have 
to to to, to pull us together, and and we can do that. And I and I think Ms. Owen, and rather than belabor this conversation any longer, I think it, you're you're the group is charging us with with putting together a draft uh, of this uh, tomorrow to share with folks. And um, if that's okay with you, Ms. Owen, I um, I don't mind initiating it. Okay. I've got a lot of notes here. Farm it off to you. We can collaborate a little bit tomorrow and then get it in draft form to um, Ms. Moyston tomorrow. And um, you can share it, Ms. Moyston, you can share it with the group to see if we've covered all the bases. And then let's, let's get it to um, seventh generation. Okay. Sound good, everybody? Okay. So you get a chance to look at it too before. Did you see my hand? Miss Pat, yes. Yeah, so what is the time frame? So you want us to give feedback tomorrow as well? As, as soon as you get it from Ms. Moyston, um, and this, the, the, as soon as you can get the feedback, it'd be, be great. If you could get the same day or Friday morning, that would be fabulous because then we can uh, we can get it to seven, seven generation and get them coming on board. That's what I'd like to, to see happen. All good? Yeah. As they say, all, are all hearts and minds clear at this moment? Darius is this. Thank you, Darius. How's school? Doing good. Good. Yep. I hope so. We got our eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any comment for us, Kid? Um, not right now, but everything sounds sounds about right as of now. Okay. That's what happens, Darius, when you're on a committee with a bunch of old people like me. You, you know, they're always looking out for their grandkids and their kids, and so, you know, we just want to make sure it's cool. Um, but you know, thank you for being here. I know, I know, high school with sports and studies and this too. Uh, and did we mention about the article last time? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there was an article in the paper that, that uh, yes. of the the young folks who were on the town committees. And uh, yeah, that that was really a, a nice feature. So uh, I actually cut it out and put it in my scrapbook. So you have a permanent place, Darius, in my life. Front page, celebrity. Yes. So. <laughs> Let me let me go back and try to okay so we're at this point we're good with that you know uh, Ms. Owen and I are going to work on that um, you know for tomorrow and get it to Ms. Moisten as quick as possible. Um, I I think we we kind of merged a lot of what was on that agenda, and uh, we're at seven fifteen so I want to just check into people where we are because I do want to mention something about. Um, uh, uh, Chief Scott Livingstone and his invitation. So Mr. Vernon Jones, you had a, a comment. I, I thought we were about to go through Jennifer's list about the CR things and see where we had agreement. We can do that. I, I missed that then, I'm Good sorry, Jennifer. yeah. And uh, can Look. you guys see Darius on the screen? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. okay. thank I'll you. I'll take yep. it down. Yep, thank you. That was good. Okay. <laughs> Darius said enough already. My God, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, let's let's do that, Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm sorry if I bypassed that. I thought we agreed that we were going to prioritize the community responder, but more discussion. I thought you all. I thought you all were going to do that in in the memo, to. but I think we're we're being asked to take a look at this list and. My question is, do, time do we have agreement that. on, what do we have agreement on? What do we still have questions about with regard to the community responder? Yes, thank you.
me see it. Screening. Uh, comments, anyone? Well, I guess on the grid, the alternate police thing is the is the one that we're going to be like bumping up. Is that the part that's focused on the the uh, community responder? Or is it um, police reform also? I think there's all of the bottom one and some of the middle one. Yeah. yeah. Would you scroll up just a bit, um, Ms. Moyston, if you will, so I can see the bottom? Oh, I think. Is yeah. that, or are we at the end there at 27? Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. fine. I can add things if you guys have stuff to be added or delete something or rephrase something. Mr. Vernon Jones has his hand raised. I'm sorry, I was reading it. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, go right ahead. One of, the, one of the things that a couple people suggested that I really liked was that, um, and it's sort of the dispatch part, but that there would be a, uh, a way that people could, they could call 911, but they also could call the community responders directly and not have to go through 911 and risk having the police sent. And I thought that was a really good idea and should, Maybe we we'll want to be explicit about that. Oh, I don't like typing on like live. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miss Pat had her hand up. Okay, I've got to stop reading here and then I'll just pay attention to this. Pay attention. Pat, so I just ahead, want sorry. to make so I just want to make sure I'm getting this correctly. We are also intending to present the general recommendation, the Youth Cultural Services Center, also to the town council. Is that correct? Are we only just focusing on the police reform and alternative policing? I'm assuming we're going to be presenting every, all these things on the list to the uh, town council. I just want to be sure. No, I, I, I don't think we're going to present all of it because it, it's it's so it's pretty extensive and some of them are community service related and some are town related uh, i'm thinking and i'd like to hear from other people that we would we would focus on the you know, alternative uh stuff that the police are that are connected to police and uh and that would be our initial focus right now and that's where the community responder piece comes in it's not dismissing the other ones, but I, I think we that that's sort of it seems in my way of thinking further down the line in terms of building an entire picture of how the community works to support, uh, especially its youth and 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 other com other pieces of the community. Um, that that's my thought on it, Mr. Vernon Jones. So I'm not okay. I don't know whether we're going to have be prepared with a concrete proposal and a complete budget at all, but I do think our any report we make to the town council should include the notion that Miss Miss Pat has laid out so clearly that mm -hmm. part of preventing racist encounters between police and community is meeting community needs in other ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a, 
uh, and we think the town council needs to take that seriously. And I, and I like the notion that it's related to reparations in some ways. Uh, and that we have, I mean, I, I don't know whether we have to talk some more to see whether we agree, but that we might say we have identified a need for a youth center or we have identified a need for a community center with uh, special uh, access to BIPOC or whatever as as things that would make this a, a safer community. Uh, we may not, I mean, the community responder thing, I think we want to have enough detail that uh, it can begin even in this budget year with the two police positions we already have. The other, I think, we want to say clearly that it's part of how we think about this, um, but I'm not convinced we're going to have all the details worked out before we need to make our first report. But I would not leave it out. Ms. Ferreira? So, sorry, I have to, I have to um, take out the video because I'm having internet issues, but um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I don't think I'm ready to, to kind of say what everything that we're going to be saying to the town council. I, I thought this conversation was just in terms of what we're going to be sharing as the, the similarities that we have so far. That's why the community responder, because there's a lot of us that put that on our recommendations. And so we're going to be talking to that as one of the priorities. But obviously, all the other things in terms of youth center or cultural center, I mean, I think we still need more discussion. Because obviously, I'm just saying time is of the essence, even in terms of this meeting, the meeting's about to, to end. Um, so I, that's why I want to focus more on the community responder. But Ms. Pat, I'm saying we still have, we still need a lot more discussion before I can say, okay, this is what I'm submitting to the town council. I'm not ready to, to say that, you know? Um, and second, I, I, you know, one of the things that I want to change in terms of the grid is that it says do not fill APD positions until two staff are hired or, or whatever. That needs to be changed. Me, my thing is do not fill APD positions. Uh, do not fill the two APD positions. I'm not sure if, if, if it's just going to be those two positions or if they need to cut the, the, the police budget in order to fund this, this community responder um, group. So, so I'm not ready to say that it's just those two salary positions. I don't know that, you know? So I wanna leave room for us to just say, do not fill those two staff positions, period. And that's that. And then we, 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 we need more discussion. At least I need more discussion. I think in, in some instances, uh, there, there are, I have to look back. I can't remember the, the, the exact city this happened, but again, it's a city versus a town. But in terms of police reform, they were actually increasing the budget, whether they called it the police budget or not. They they increased it, but the increases in the in the, in the the budget were related to the kinds of things we're talking about. They were. Um, related to you know community responders, they were leading to other, and I have to look it up, and I, I'd be happy to share with folks. But it was bringing on, you know, medical personnel. It was it had to do with training and um, you know clearly first responder issues around mental health and uh, medical issues and the homeless and those. Things. So it wasn't like taking money away from the police department. It was. And again, they, they actually increased it, but the money was not going into what was traditional policing. It was money that was going into alternative programs that would augment the work of the police department. Yeah, but Mr. So, Wiley, I, yeah. I still need a lot more conversation on that because for me, I, oh, me too. I, don't, wanna, saying, yeah. I don't wanna increase the police department's budget. For me, it would be about having a separate program that works in partnership with the police, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to be under the police department and increase their budget, no. Not and I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you 100%, Ms. Ferreira. I think that to, have a, to, to, to jump to that right now without having a full conversation would, would be premature. And I think we, we you know we do need more information about that. Mr. 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 Vernon Jones. Well, I think what Jennifer has on the list came out of something I wrote, and I want, just want to be clear about what I was intending at the time. Uh -huh. I don't want them ever to fill the two positions that are currently vacant. And I was proposing, and we still need more discussion, that they also not fill the next two police positions that become vacant uh, until we've. Uh, expanded the community responder program. 
Mm -hmm. Got it. Ms. Pat? I raised my hand. So I hear what everybody is saying. And I think we really, really need to think about the unique opportunity that we have to do this work and for us to put everything out there on the table for the town council. We may not have this type of opportunity again. I don't care about whether we have, whether the town has money or not. Amis is well resourced. And if they really are committed to equity in this town, they will find money from marijuana sales tax and other reserve. If they really want to make this work, we have to put everything on the table. I just want to caution us that we shouldn't be thinking about, you know, um, will the town council be able to approve everything? Let's put it out there for them and let them decide on the negotiating uh, terms. But I would be very disappointed that we would leave some of the items. For me, I don't know about you guys, I actually made a <clears throat> personal outreach to people like, what would they like to see? I actually have some white folks telling me it would be nice to have like a cultural center in Amherst. So I think if we're saying that we want to include people's voices, this is one of the ways to do that. And I will shut up. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Are there other comments about um, this list and where we might have some sense, some focus of agreement and maybe some questions about uh, priorities? Um, just taking the last look here. Okay. Um, I'm having a little trouble with my screen right now. I apologize. I'm jumping around. Let me come back. Mr. Vernon Jones, are you, this is a, we're kind of circling back to the beginning of this conversation. And I know this is a, looking at the, these priorities. Are we at a point where um, you and others feel we are at a sense of agreement, acknowledging also uh, full acknowledgement of what Ms. Ms. Pat was saying about the uh, other necessary supportive programs and, and, and initiatives that need to happen in this town uh, in order to, to have a comprehensive response to um, the issues that, that we're faced, being faced with right now? Well, I think I see four areas where we're not, where we need to do more work. One is exactly what is the staffing going to be? Uh, do we need a medic or not? Um, two, um, are we going to equip them to transport um, people or not? I mean, they, they definitely need a vehicle, but is it going to be a vehicle they can transport? Um, three, how do we begin to work uh, peer, uh, community peers uh, into the program? Um, which is something that we recommended from the front, from the beginning and have in our bid and we haven't quite figured out how to do. And then three, what's our budget proposal? I mean, I think this is all for a program we can implement this year. What's our budget proposal and how fast do we want to expand it over the next budget year? But those are all things we can work on maybe with some help from our consultants. Thank you. Other, other comments? Mr. Vernon Jones, did your volume go down a bit? 
Oh, sorry, did it? I'm. I didn't make any changes, but. Oh, that sounds better. I don't know if you maybe you came closer. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Thank you. Okay. Other comments. Not seeing any hands. I'd, I'd like to, <clears throat> since we took a moment to look at this, uh, you know, perhaps what you've offered, Mr. Vernon Jones, is a is a, a bit of closure to this this item. I um, I guess I'm wondering um, how the <clears throat> is this what we'll bring to a conversation with the consultants around the um, community responder conversation. And I guess that kind of directing that to you, Mr. Vernon Jones, if that's the, the summary statements you made, is that something we want to use as a kind of a, a list, if you will, discussion list for what we want to bring to the, uh, to the, to the consultants. I, I'm not sure what makes sense there. I think we should tell them that we've we've decided we want to recommend this kind of program. Right. But whether they need more detail from us right now or not, I don't know. I I guess sometime soon I'd like to get them working on where our questions are, but I don't know whether that needs to be in the first meeting or not. Okay. Ms. Owens had a hand up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ms. Owen? I think we should also include the overtime document that Mr. Blockelman sent us, just so the consulting group has an idea of the budget that's available so they can factor that in when they put the budget proposal for this type of program together. Okay, I mean, uh, I guess my, my question would be yes and um, there are a number of data points that we we would probably want the um, consultants to look at in addition to what we, you know, we talked about in the invitation with respect to community forum uh, feedback and the survey data. But there's a there's a plethora of um, police data, too, and we have to figure out how they, we want them at to, or how they're going to maneuver through that data to in, inform the work that they're doing and inform our recommendations. So it's, that's why I said the and. This, this is information that we've asked them for a while back, and now it's, it's coming in, in more detail to us. So how do we incorporate this in, in the work that the consultants are doing with respect to their data analysis? Um, Ms. Walker? Did we come to an agreement as to whether or not we were going to send this to the consultant group in our invitation to our next meeting? We did I think not. that's why we were looking at this initially was to decide whether or not we were just gonna attach this document when we send our invite to the consultants for next week. Um, I don't know if, if we aren't going to, if we need to continue editing it right now, um, and if we are, if, if we want to finish editing it so that we can send it to them? Um, it, initially, it wasn't my understanding that we were necessarily sending it to them at the moment we were talking about it, but I think we were looking at to see where we had some consensus on the categories of where we found uh, agreements on what, is, what should be prioritized and, and not. If I'm mistaken, I certainly can reel that back, but um, uh, yeah, Ms. Walker. Sorry, prioritized, but for what? Like, I, I, that's where I'm missing the connection here. We were prioritizing it for sending it to the consultant group or prioritizing it for, I think that's where my confusion is right here. Cause now we're talking about sending stuff to the town council and mm -hmm. I'm just a little yeah. bit confused as to what exactly we are even talking about. Exactly, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I guess I would, Mike, 
I asked us to get started on this so we had an understanding of where we were in agreement. And I do think it makes sense to communicate that to the consultants, whether that's before our first meeting or after, I don't know. I wasn't thinking we would send this document. I was just, we were using this document to get clear about our agreements, but I, I wouldn't use this as the way to communicate it to them. Okay. Ms. Pereira has her hand up. I'm sorry. The the, the sound, Mr. Virgil, I'm leaning really into computer to hear you. So oh, I think sorry. I got yes. I can speak more loudly. Just that sounds me. good. Yeah. Um, uh, who is up next on the on the queue here? I'm sorry. I, Ms. Ferreira? On the yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm just looking at the time. I think we need to wrap it up. I, I, I also was under the impression that I guess we were doing this in order to send it to the um, consultants, but if we're not, I think we just need, we already had the list. I don't know if we need to give them everything in the kitchen sink too right now, you know? I mean, let's just focus on what we had already talked about, which was the list of, you know, of, of things that they need to focus on. And, you know, we need to wrap things up. I don't think we need to give them the next list in terms of, okay, we need to look at the the transport, blah, 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 and all of that, because we, we, we'll, we'll have another me meeting with them. We'll have more conversations with them. Mm -hmm. Let's just kind of, you know, focus in. Yeah. What are we sending them? What are the documents we're sending them? You brought a good point, though, in terms of the AP, the APD data that we have. I think that would be something else that we should probably just put there for them to look at is the APD data because we already have it. Uh, I, I, I agree. And I mean, does someone else have their hand up? I'm sorry. I want to be I sure. Miss Pat, I'm sorry. Yeah. So when we started this discussion, um, I had suggested that we send along with individual recommendation that we made. And then uh, Ms. Owen also suggested to send this list. I think we should send everything to them instead of like picking and choosing so that they, they know exactly, you know, what the CSWG group came up with. I'm very uncomfortable for us to be prioritizing on what basis. Um, I think um, we, sh we should be mindful of, you know, everybody's contribution and just let's pass it on to the consulting group, you know, for them to know exactly where everybody's input, you know, uh, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to see anyone's input lost in, in this conversation. Let me just, just say that. And what I'm, I'm suggesting in terms of how we went through this list of what we're going to say in an invitation to them is that, you know, we, we just came up with a list of things that are going into it in a composite of, of an invitation to them. I think embedded in that is that we have certain bits of information we can share with them and we will share with them. Um, I, I would hope that in, in the initial meeting, we don't go too far down the road talking about the details necessarily, the, the more discrete details of what we're talking about but also to let them know, yes, we have recommendations about community services for you. We, yes, we have community services for this and the other. I think initially we have to just, we have to hear from them and we have to see, you know, what, take their, their temperature too on what, what, uh, what they're, they're thinking about. So I, I, I'm all for including everything. I think in terms of the a discussion, an initial discussion with them, we don't want to overload them with a lot, a lot of things, but we do want to make them well aware of what our palette looks like. You know, here, here's the focus right now. We're getting to know you. Here's what we want you to do, and here's the here's the the scope and breadth of the work that we're we're looking at, and we want you to pay attention to it. And here it is, and we and we can send it to them. I, I have no problem with that, um, because there were there were. I have some things too. I I didn't put out there in the list, but I I. I think ultimately they, they need to learn as much as they can about us and the work we've done for three months. So, Ms. Pat? So I like the word, uh, Mr. Wiley, overload. In that case, I'm almost, I mean, the suggestion for um, the data on overtime for police, I think it's a very good data, but I don't think it's priority right now. I don't think we should send it next week, but at some point they can still get it so that they're not getting too, too much um, document from us at the first meeting, before the first meeting. 
I think it's a great idea for them to, to have maybe in a couple of weeks. And I think we can come up with with a, a, a plan, Ms. Pat, to, to, to get this to them because there's a lot of data mm -hmm. that that came came to us in so many different ways mm -hmm. that um, and some of it we haven't had a chance to look at, especially like the surveys and the community forum data. We were getting uh, information and data that you know the, the police gave a, a report um, back, in, I believe it was in July or something. Um, they did a, a, a PowerPoint before the, the 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 town council, I believe. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be looked at by by this these these folks, and that's why we hired them. So we can put that all out there in an addendum to them to say, hey, and here <laughs> here's the other stuff. But right now we want to have an initial conversation with you to 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 launch this thing um, given the short timeline we had and uh, get their their feedback so I'd like to just go ahead and proceed the the you know acknowledging all of that and I think Ms. Owen and I will try to reflect all of this in our invitation to them and we'll let you you know, we'll send it to you and let you look at it to see if you have any comments additions edits to it and we'll try to get that out like ASAP um, all capital letters ASAP, um, but you'll have plenty, you have some time to look at it. So, you know, with that, uh, you know, I, I, you know, we, we have a moment, so I'd, I'd like to move on. Uh, we have a moment with this, this invitation to, to review it. So I'd like to move on to the next thing, if we may. We are over time. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ferreira. I forgot to look at my clock. It's quarter to eight already. And, uh, uh, again, we have a lot to, to discuss. Here, here's my one question. Um, the two things that are looming on our, on our agenda are clearly our interface with, with this new consultant group coming on to work with us. That's our priority right now. We also have a standing invitation that's about to be made to the chief of police. And I understand he's available um, next Wednesday, okay? So, um, and this is related to our, you know, meeting timelines, et cetera. Um, do we want to, in addition to creating a, 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 a format and an outline for having an initial discussion with our consultants, do we also want to invite the uh, chief of police next next Wednesday, and I'm asking this because I know how lengthy these conversations could be. But if if we want to prioritize with the consultants, we may take up a bulk of the meeting with them next time, especially given the the the, the amount of information we have to share. So, um, my suggestion, if I will, would be to have the consultants as our major agenda item uh, for next week. And uh, respectfully ask if we could reschedule or schedule uh, the chief of police for possibly the following week when we have less of a full agenda with our consultants. And I'd just like to hear what people think about that. Ms. Ferreira has had her hand up. I'm not sure if it's okay. from the last question or not. I, I got to shrink the screen again. I was looking at the agenda there. Sorry. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah. yeah. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I don't, I, I, I would say move the chief of police because, you know, that's going to be, I mean, at least for me, I need to prep for that. That's going to be a, a, a big meeting, an important meeting. I, I'd rather us uh, prioritize the consultants and then we can put another topic on that, you know, in case they don't show up. But I don't think it should be the chief of police. I mean, for me, that's going to be a, a very, at least for me, a very serious meeting. <laughs> I don't want it just to be kind of like, you know, kind of like, well, the consultants didn't show up, so let's meet with you, you know, type of thing. We need to devote a meeting to meeting with the chief of the police, or at least the majority of our meeting to meeting with the chief of the police. Uh, Mr. Wiley, you're muted. Sorry, thank you, Ms. Walker. I, I, I think there's um, 
Yes, not only do we have to prepare, but we, we want to have him prepared so that um, we have a conversation that's gonna make sense, that's gonna move the, move the needle here a bit. So, you know, it, anyway, so I guess I'm agreeing with you uh, that if we wanna prioritize the, um, you know, the consultants next meeting, I think that might serve as well. Especially given the, the context of this meeting right now, we're already 20 minutes over time and, you know, <laughs> we're still talking about this, which is good, but um, I wanna not have that happen with our consultants. Other comments? Okay, seeing none, I think uh, Ms. 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 Owen and I will go forward with our charge to, to get an invitation letter out. Um, hopefully we'll get a quick response back from, from our con consultant group. And um, we'll have, an, we'll have an, a, them on our agenda for next Wednesday. And I think that was, that's going to serve us all well. Um, any other final comments or questions, Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, I assume part of that is that the police chief will be invited for the next week. I think so. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And I'd I, like to see if he can he can become available. I was working through uh, conversations with. Um, Mr. Bachelman, but I'm sure I can um, outreach to him directly. And, uh, him being the police chief. Yeah. And uh, Ms. Moyston, um, would you be willing to remind the town manager that we asked him to explore funding for the second bid uh, request, you know, for a second invitation for bid? Uh, and also if he is able to identify information he needs from us to begin planning uh, a CR program. Thank you, Mr. Vernon thank Jones. You. So thank you all. Uh, let's just keep moving forward here. This is good work. We're, we're, we're plotting through at moments and then we're speeding through with others. So I think we're in good shape. We're, we're, we're getting somewhere. We, we, I'm, grateful that we have a consultant to work with us so that we can move this whole process forward. Um, um, upcoming... Sorry, can I, because I, I know sometimes you don't see my hands because- I, I don't in this case. Know. No, so yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just I'm sorry. something quick for the agenda so that next time, so we don't forget, we still have those gift um, cards or what have you that we need to figure out. I don't want that to kind of leave off. So I think like, let's say the consultant doesn't take the whole time next week. I think we need to add that to the agenda. And also we can't forget that there was that apology that we needed to present to the community, which we haven't done yet. And I don't want us to forget that too. Because when we say- Good we're reminders. To do it. Okay. That, those two things I think need to be put on the agenda in case um, the consultants don't take up the entire time next week. Okay. Can um, Pat and Brianna stay on for a few minutes so we can yeah. just schedule something to meet yeah. this week? Yeah. Thanks. All good. Thank, say you. Something. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Ms. Pat? I want, to say, I want to thank everybody for our robust discussion tonight. I feel that this is a very productive meeting that we're able to discuss um, our recommendations. So, and everybody's commitment to this work. It's not easy to come to meetings every week. So I appreciate everybody's time. <clears throat> we appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I, that's, uh, around the circle here agreed I you know I think we all are doing the best we can um, with the information and time we have so I you know I, I think that's a, a blessing for the town so let's just keep staying together and hanging tough yep. um, so that said um, Ms. Moyson do you have any um, upcoming events <laughs> I just no. said that because you usually do I know I know. Yeah, I'm not you. until May. Not until oh, May. yeah, not until about May. Okay. Well, let me thank you for all the stuff you did in this past February, too, as others did, but, you know, for featuring a lot of events for our community. Um, anyone else? 
Mr. One more Irwin, thing. Mr. Cage, One I more thing. see you all. Uh, Miss Pat. One more thing. Who has very good voice? Can we sing for Miss Marston? When oh, what was your birthday again? Was it today or yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Can we sing a belated happy Wait, birthday? Wait, today's Paul's. Don't tell him I told you, but today's Paul's. Oh, can we do both? <laughs> Who wants to lead us in song? <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. This this is an agenda item that did not come before me before 48 hours before this meeting started. So I think we're going to have to put that off until item six on the agenda. Okay. Okay. So our next meeting date is next week. And we'll be posting the agenda, which we know what it is. And I'm going to also include the two items, um, uh, Ms. Ferreira, that you suggested uh, get those in there as well to the uh, gifts cards and we'll talk, you know, about the, the letter as well. So that uh, other topics, um, Miss Pat, you have- I just said that. You want to say happy birthday to somebody? Yeah, to Miss Mar- not me, everybody. I can't sing. <laughs> Whose birthday is it? Miss Moiston. It's Miss Moiston's birthday? All right, hit it. I'm Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Moisten. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Get it, Russ. You are a trip. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Happy welcome. birthday. Thank you. I had a great time. That was totally not synchronized, but that's not oh, that, that was pretty oh, yeah. funny. Zoom. And we have it on that's recording. Not, you can't do that on Zoom. Anyway. We're having fun. I, like I know we're having fun. fun. Uh, we want cake at the next meeting, Ms. Moist. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'll send it. Each to someone. Can I get a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Ms. Pat moves. Uh, and I get a I second? Motion. Ms. Walker seconded. Thank you all very much for your hard work and your attention to all this detail. And look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, good night. Good. You stay, Alicia. Oh, that's right. I'm no uh, not Alicia, Brianna. Sorry. Brianna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Have a good night. Oh, I, I yeah, good night. I just wanted to touch base with you guys because we do need to move forward and I don't want us to lose momentum. So I was planning to ask you guys to stay anyway. So um can we schedule a time to meet? Because it's so late. I my I can't possibly think anymore. Um to meet I don't know, tomorrow or Friday. Do either of you have availability? Preferably Friday. I think my Thursday is pretty booked. I'm flexible. She, you know, she's she'll be working on a subcommittee with uh, Paul tomorrow. So Friday sounds good. I'm flexible. Yeah, Friday sounds good. All right. Um. Yeah, it's great for me to suggest what's a meeting time and then not like look at the schedule. So, um, nine thirty. Or does the afternoon work better? I also have like the afternoon available. Uh, noon work like noon works good for me. If you guys could do like twelve to one. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. On Friday, right? Yep. So I'll send you guys a meeting invite again. Okay. But I just think like we need to reach start reaching out to the different businesses, and we have to figure out how we're going to do that and communicate with. Um, Claudia over at the bid to see what she needs from us. I know we have to purchase cards, so I have to work on that kind of stuff. So um, we just, I feel like things are getting lost because so many, there's so many moving parts and this part I know I've, we've got, so yeah. that's it. So Jennifer, I have a question for you. Is this being recorded? Um, 